What's up guys, gals? It's Groover back here, bringing you guys the latest chapter review for One Piece. One Piece chapter 1008. Let's get underway with this one because you guys all know my feelings at the end of the last chapter, chapter 1007. Is it Odin? Is it not? I distinctively remember telling you guys about the three camps of thought that were on this one, and the fan base was going to be split by them. Majority of them were, of course, the one that is true. However, however, I still stick to my guns, and I love that Ashura Doji actually basically speaks my feelings towards it in this chapter alone. Because... There were three schools of camp. There's three schools of thought going into this, right? We had, it's really him. That was a very small percentage of the fan base. It's really him. He's really back. There was then the the right answer, which was, no, it's not him. It's a fake. It's duplicitous. It's somebody evil. It's Oni, or it's, it, whether it was somebody good, like Onimaru or somebody, some people brought that up, uh, or it's somebody like Conjuro. Right? And which, that, spoiler alert, it's Kondro. It's Kondro. Uh, he's still alive and stuff. And even Kiku says, uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't finish him off. It's like, don't worry about it. It's not about you being soft. He was a friend. He was a comrade for years. It makes sense that you wouldn't have, like, this just proves that you have a heart. You know, you're not this, you know, hardened, you know, heartless monster that can just easily forget about all that time and stuff not like Kondro this proves that you're better than Kondro the fact that you couldn't finish him off decisively like that um so that's a good sign but then there's the third camp the camp that I was in and the camp that I'm in here to this day because as I said Ashura Doji still brings up the exact Ashura Doji in this chapter brings up the exact feelings I have of being in that great camp being in that middle camp that school of thought which was, as he says, as Odin's like, yeah, Toki brought me back. Don't worry about it, guys. Let's go defeat Kaido. We're all good. And I'm like, oh, I want it so right to be true. And they all buy it. Kanemon and everybody all buy it because they don't, they have this, it's it's not possible. It's not possible. And this is how Ashura Doji brings it up. Like, he talks about how no matter what, we saw Odin die that day. Now, I brought up the possibility that maybe that wasn't truly Odin who died in the pot. Maybe he had switched out somehow. I, I don't know how that would be possible, but maybe it truly wasn't Odin in the pot boiling. You know, it was his stand-in for some reason or what have you. Um, that would have been a possibility as to why he doesn't have the bullet. He survived, etc. And then Toki could have pushed him into the future. There was that sliver of possibility, but of course it's unlikely. And it's proven here. Now, and Ashura Doji brings up, you can't, we saw him die that day. No matter what, you can't go back to the past. So no matter what she pushes to the future, somebody who dies can't return to life. It doesn't matter. Her power is irrelevant at that stage. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. And they're all like, and Kanemon even says, but but it, it's not possible. And this is what I love. Ashura Doji is my favorite line in in the chapter. It's this just this little tiny monologue. They'll probably expand on it in the anime. It'll be really cool. Because he just says, I know how you feel, but you have to open your eyes. We all feel the same way. We all want it to be him. And I was just like, it's, that's, that's exactly what it sums up. Would it be bad writing if it was Odin? Sure, argue that. Would it be a dissect? Sure, argue that. But just like we all love Odin, Kazuki, I don't know of very many people who dislike Odin as a character. It's sort of like if you brought back Whitebeard, right? Would it be terrible writing? Would it negate a lot of the good stuff about One Piece? Would it do this? Would it do this? Yes, 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 yes. That's, that, that's all fine dandy. But don't you still want him back? Of course you do. So in the same way, we all want it to be Odin. Of course we will all want Odin back. We as a fan base, we'd love to have Odin back. We just want it written really well, but we want Odin to come back. Of course, that takes away from a lot of the struggle and the entire storyline and themes of Wano and stuff. But Ashura Doji crying as he clashes with the fake Odin. 
Just saying. We all want it to be him. I know how you feel, but it's not him. He can't come back to life. The dead stay dead. Except for Brooke. But the dead stay dead. So I just... Something about this, it really spoke to me. I really liked it. It summed up the fact that I don't feel stupid for wanting it last chapter. For not just automatically, like a lot of the reviewers did, just go, there's no way this can be Odin. Let's go down the theories of why it can't be Odin. They didn't even give it a second thought that they... Nobody that I watched, I watched about, uh, I don't know, seven or eight different reviewers for chapter 1007. And not not a one of them, as far as I remember, actually said said what we all thought. I... I if it, I wanted to be Odin, that would, like, I don't know how Oda can spin this so it doesn't take away from all the writing up till now in the story. But it's Oda. Can I believe in him? I want it to be Oda. I didn't hear a single person. Everybody just jumped into the camp of it's not possible and went down the reasons as to why. Instead of, I just wanted one fan of Odin to actually stand up and go, I, I wish it was. And this makes me feel... Because I was like the only one that I know of that really spoke about that. And it does. this chapter actually makes me feel good about that. I don't feel like stupid or I don't feel bad for saying it or, or really being of that mindset that maybe it is Odin. Please be Odin because I love Odin. I want it to be Odin, right? So this chapter, Ashura Doji stepping up to show me that even Oda knows how the fan base feels, you know, in, in a way. Because even though a lot of the reviewers didn't say it, the cold-hearted bastards, um, I'll, even though a lot of them didn't say it, I'm sure that a lot of people, if it was written well, if Oda said, look, I can write this 4D chess story so it all makes sense and doesn't take away from a single theme or storyline in Wano, and I bring back Odin. How many people would actually say, no, still don't do it? Even if you can write it flawlessly so it's perfect, no plot holes, no bullshit, no taking away from anything, and Odin comes back. Who would tell Oda, nah, still don't bring Odin back? Who would say that? So, I just love this chapter. Sorry for about, about that rant, guys, but it's just that part of this chapter really spoke to me because most of my chapter 1007 review was all about that. It was all about wanting it to be Odin, even though we knew it couldn't be. So... I, I really like this, and they're crying about it and stuff. Of course, they find out it's Conjuro, um, and, you know, it's just one of his doll or one of his drawings, one of his paintings sort of idea, and he's controlling it remotely. He says he's going to die soon. He's been grieve, uh, grievously injured and stuff. Ashura Doji took a couple of stabs to the back already, so and they're all actually pretty injured right now, right? So they're all trying to go after, um, you know, like go, all right, we don't have time for this. We got to find control. We got to get to Lord Momonosuke. We got to do this. We got to do that. So fake Odin lights up a bomb. He's got, he's got the flint. He's got a bomb under his kimono and he's ready to go. So he says, you know, stay here and fight with me and stuff. I sure Doji and uh, Denjiro, they recognize this and Doji doesn't even think. He just jumps at Odin going through the window and he's just hugs him sort of idea. He goes, you know, go and stop Conjuro. The rest of you get out of here. And he's just like, don't, don't do it. And, of course, you know, he's stabbing Ashura Doji and stuff like that. And But Doji won't let go. He, it's, it's sacrifice time. Please don't be at the will of, of D. The will of D. Doji. Will, will of P. Will of D. I mean, maybe he's got the will of D. Okay, fair enough. But uh, Ashura Doji... Hopefully this won't be a Pell thing. I think we've just literally seen our true, this is a true death uh, on on screen. This is an actual true death that we're seeing right now because he jumps him and says, never defile the name, face, or mannerism. Never defile Kazuki Odin ever again. The bomb goes off. It blows. It, I mean, it just looks absolutely horrendous. Kanemon even looks down, sees Ashura doji's body we don't see it necessarily but we do see the husk of it it's very bruised up it's very burnt up remember ashura doji just like all the red scabbards were fighting kaido they're completely worn out they barely you know they got their wounds patched up just enough so they can still move sort of idea but he couldn't have survived like i really hope that 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 ashura doji is officially like 
that's his death scene because if he comes back, that's just going to be weird. Um, Oda's got to step up and make sure like that was his death, right? Like people have to die in the Wano arc. It's just not a thing. And considering who comes back this chapter, definitely need more death um, for us to feel the weight and the reality of this. Uh, and, you know, Kanemon and everyone going forth trying to uh, go find Conjuro. So he even says here, uh, Conjuro's still running away and saying it's his great final act, so he's still as evil as hell. So they're trying to chase down, uh, you know, Kanemon and the rest of the Red Scabbards after Ashura Doji's noble sacrifice. They're now trying to chase down, uh, of course, Conjuro and make him fully pay. This is where Jack shows up. This is where Jack shows up. And with this, listen, you got your ass kicked. You were a cheap ass. Listen, you are the biggest L taker in all of One Piece. You are the biggest L taker. Bellamy has more W cred than you do, Jack. For God's sakes, sit down. I'm tired of Jack. We don't need Jack. And then, you know, Inarashi just speaking the facts, spitting the facts at this, you know, this fat elephant. Because he's just like, you know, oh, well, you know, now I'm here. I'm going to stop everything. And uh, Inarashi just like, everybody, go on ahead. Don't worry about this. I got this. He's like, really? You're going to take me on? You know, aren't you a little injured there? And he's like, well, we're both injured since I just kicked your ass on the rooftop. So, yeah, all right. Um, and so he's like, oh, you're injured. So are you. Eh, seems fair to me. And that's uh, why he says, like, this isn't, you know, I'm choosing. To, uh, our score is settled. I beat you. I, I won. So right now, I'm just making it so that you aren't holding up anybody else. I'm more than enough to take you down. Uh, and then Jack all, oh, well, there's no moon down here. And Inarashi coming back with, yeah, well, this time you don't have poisonous gas either. So once again, no moon, but you don't have that cheap ass poisonous gas either slowing me down so once again still a pretty even fight and i love that i love that because that's something that people tend to forget is that not only did they not have the sulong forms at the time but when inarashi and nekamamushi fought against jack there was still the poisonous gas from caesar and all that shit happening at the same time when they initially were fighting him and holding him back and stuff right so like they've never had a fair fight in all honesty, Inarashi might, or Nekamamushi might be able to take down Jack. It's like an even fight without any trickery or bullshit on either side. But I love that Inarashi keeps like, Jack's like, ha ha ha, A. And he's like, ha ha ha, B. And he just has a comeback for every single thing. He's just talking the smack. Something about that. Inarashi just saying, like, like, oh, you don't have the moon down here. It's like, yeah, well, this time, you know, unlike last time, you beat me. Uh, you don't have any poisonous gas. So uh, I guess we'll both have to make do with a handicap, huh? And I'm just like, yes, Jack did not actually beat them on his own power. He's the biggest L taker, the biggest loser in all of One Piece. Facts. Let's keep going. Even Orochi here, who... I mean, people kept waiting for him to come back. He's got the Yamato no Orochi. It's like the Hydra from Greek mythology. You know, it's got, it's the dragon, it's the serpent, it's the whatever. And it's got all the heads and all the tails. And it's where the Kusanagi blade came out of and blah, blah, blah. And Susano and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we all sort of expected him to come back. But the wait time was so long, really, uh, with breaks and everything, that I think some people started to doubt. Some people truly started to doubt. And here he is. He's back. You know, we knew uh, Fukuwakaju of the uh, Fushi, whatever his name is, of the Oniwaban group uh, is, uh, you know, he was in on it because we see him back there like shooting at, uh, you know, pleasures or whatever they are. And, uh, you know, Orochi's like, burn the castle down, burn it all down, kick a kick a guy. You know, this is what you get for betraying me, kind of. We're up in the sky, nowhere to run. We'll burn the island to the ground. <laughs> so he's insane. But yeah, so. That all happened, and then we get uh, Momonosuke once again still running away with uh, Yamato and Shinobu. But this is where we get, I believe, another hint of the whole the voice of all things because he seems to know that Luffy, how Luffy is faring on the rooftop, and even Shinobu questions, like, How do you know that, Lord Momonosuke? 
Um, I believe it has a connection to do with the voice of all things and all that stuff, probably. Uh, that makes the most sense to me. Rather than another new ability or something else the Kazukis have, uh, I, I'm just going to chalk it up to that. And, of course, then we are, ja we are jumping back. We're not jacking back because Jack is a loser. We are jumping back to the rooftop. I believe Chapter 1009 is going to stick to the rooftop. Um, so that's really cool. We're finally back to the rooftop now. Luffy charging forward and bam, charging forward, bam, is reminding me of the DBZ, uh, DBZA abridged the movie, The Return of Cooler or whatever. And Vegeta just keeps, Ratna, Ratna, and just keeps going back and forth, back and forth with Vegeta. He goes, he's pretty persistent. Goku, oh, you have no idea. <laughs> he's pretty persistent, yeah. So Luffy just keeps getting slammed into the rocks and stuff, and they're just like, Think before you leap. You keep leaping. He's like, no, they're humans just like us. We must be doing damage to them. And they're just like, kid, Zoro, Law, they're all looking on and even Killer. They're just sort of like, uh, yeah, well, we really do need to separate them because, I mean, just staring them down right now, it looks like the pits of hell. We're staring into hellfire right now. We might be doing damage. I have no idea, but they doesn't look like it from here. They Like, how can you even call these things human? Like, Luffy's comedy. He's like, did you come up here to complain and lose, or did you come up here to win? And Zoro's like yelling at him, Luffy, that's what we're trying to do. Stop leaping into battle. We're trying to think about how to fight them right now because clearly what you're doing isn't working. So, uh, and then we get a very imposing shot of uh, Big Mom looking actually super fierce and Kaido officially in his hybrid form. Now, some people, I imagine, are going to be super disappointed by the hybrid form. My problem with their disappointment is going to be the fact that, um, what made you guys think that uh, Kaido already looked like a goddamn imposing beast of a man or ogre or oni or whatever he is? Already had horns, already had the, you know, the stuff, right? So he added a couple horns, whatever. But he already had the horns. He already had this. He already had that, right? So on top of that, looking at other hybrid forms throughout the series, it's a hybrid form. It's somewhere in between the human and the full animal. Well, a dragon and a human... He's got the scales, seems like he's got the claws, you know, he's got sort of the dragon-like nose and face, he's got the horns. So, well, I don't know what people really expected, everyone was like, oh my god, Kaido's hybrid form, I'm like, yeah, I'm hyped for it, because I feel like this is now we're going to get into so sort of, we're entering more of the middle, we already saw the introduction of this fight. You know, now we're in the midway part of the fight, you know, with Kaido pulling out all the stops. And this is his trump card, his hybrid form, something we've never seen. But I wasn't holding my breath like this is going to be the greatest design Oda has ever done. I was not one of those people. So I don't, like, I think I saw a few things about people being super disappointed. And I'm like, it looks fine to me. It looks like what I expected a hybrid form of a dragon human to look like. He's got the extra horns. He's got the scales. He's got the claws. He's got a tail by the looks of it. That's, I mean, that's that's a dragon hybrid form. You know, I don't know why Kaido would be super special. He's not eating, rum, but give him a rumble ball. Maybe he'll get what you guys want. I don't know, monster point hybrid dragon form. There you go. Um, but either way, Luffy's just like, he doesn't give a shit. He's just like, that suits me just fine. I've been to hell and back a couple of times. It's my home territory. Let's do this. And... Kaido is looking thrilled because once again, remember when Kaido, when this fight first started, he was thinking of all the dudes who actually give him a challenge, give him a fight or can defeat him. And uh, he's just, he's just loving Luffy's attitude now. He's loving that he's hurting them, like and able to actually punch him and shit. He's loving it. He's like, that's right, Straw Hat. That light and that twinkle in your eye, that never leaves, does it? You always believe you can win. All right, this is what I'm talking about. Let's do it. He's actually having a good time. Kaido's enjoying this right now. So, um, And the other ones are saying they got to split them up. Like maybe it's probably going to be Law, Kid, and Killer uh, take on like Big Mom and Zoro and Luffy take on Kaido or something like they have to divide their attention taking them on while they're side by side is nearly impossible so Law suggests like we really need to like 
separate them. We need to peel them apart. We need to fight them separately because this is just insane. Um, so that's definitely uh, true. It's very true. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the chapter. I think I covered all the rant stuff about uh, the fake Odin that I wanted to cover. Because uh, there was some stuff there. There was some stuff to cover there. Um, as I said, I chalk up the Momonosuke thing to the voice of all things. That's pretty easy. I don't think there's another power uh, going on with that. Uh, the Jack stuff made me laugh my ass off. Like, when will this stupid mammoth just go down? Listen, you fat elephant, you've taken more L's, and the only W's you have is when you cheated. So, like, you've never straight up won a fight. So, stop pretending like you're a threat. Inarashi is probably going to stall Jack long enough, and they're going to wear each other down. And that's just going to prove that literally without the poison, and with them both injured... That Jack can't even take down Inurashi by himself. So, yeah. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then once again, people are going to be disappointed by the Kaido form. You know what I'm hyped about? I'm hyped about the fact that this means we're back to the rooftop gang. Chapter 1009, inbound. No break next week, apparently. So that's really cool. So only one week away for more of the rooftop fight. Can't wait. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the review. Hope you guys enjoyed the chapter. Like, comment, and subscribe. As always, it's always super appreciated. We did reach the 500 milestone that in the month of March. That is awesome. Uh, we did actually really well in the month of March. So uh, don't forget. But that doesn't mean we get to stop, guys. 600 subscribers. 600 subscribers. That's our next goal. We got to, I mean, let's just keep adding to the goal. We got to keep adding to the goal. The milestone video content will be out in the first week of April, as I promised. At some point, this, you know, technically, in the first seven days of April. How about that? Not exactly the first week. It's only like a couple of days in the first week. But, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe as always. Don't forget to drink, res drink responsibly as always. And we'll see you guys back here next time. All right. Peace out.